In this class, we're going to consider how you solve quadratic equations using completed square form. So with quadratic equations, you've got two scenarios. So either your quadratic expression will factorise, and it could factorise in different ways depending on what it looks like. So it could be a trinomial, which would go into two brackets, or it could be a binomial where you use a common factor, or it could be a difference of two squares. But in any of those scenarios, it either factorises or it doesn't factorise. If it doesn't factorise, you can use the quadratic formula, but a more numerical or maybe algebraic version of the quadratic formula, which is essentially the same technique, is to use the completed square form. So remember that completing the square is a technique that takes a quadratic expression and rewrites it in a different format. So to take your general sort of generic quadratic equation, it looks like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Now, like I said, to solve these, either this will factorize or it won't. If it factorizes, go ahead and you just solve it. You, you're maybe familiar with that already. Um, but the method we're going to look at is to assume that it doesn't factorize in those ways, or maybe it does factorize in those ways. We could still use this method, but instead we're going to rewrite the quadratic in completed square form, which would be x plus or minus some value p squared, and then plus or minus some value q. Set that to zero, so we're just rewriting this part like that. And then there's a process for finishing it off and solving it that way. So it's, it's a fairly straightforward process, but the challenge is remembering how to do um, completing the square, how to write your quadratic expression in completed square form. So I'll demonstrate that example, uh, that with the first example, and then we'll just kind of work these other two. This one's a little more difficult. This would be a level above these two up here. So with completing the square, what we do is we start by looking at the coefficient of the x term, and we take half of that number. So half of four is two, and that's the number that goes inside the bracket. So ideally, you would already be familiar with completing the square if you're taking this class, but if not, maybe um, check out what I'm doing here. If it doesn't make sense to you, then check out a class on completing the square, and then you can come back to this one. But basically, you just look at this expression here, you take half of this number, that goes in the bracket, that would give you if you if you factor if you expanded those two brackets out so x plus two x plus two, then you would get an x squared. You would get two x twos to give you the four x. The fact that we get two of them that's why we've half the number. But you would also get a two times a two to give you a four, like a, just a number constant number four. We don't want a four. We want a three. So if this is giving us a four, we need to take off one to get to three. So in other words. That there, that trinomial, and that there are the same thing, just written in a different way. So let me just quickly expand on that. So x plus 2 squared, that just means x plus 2 times x plus 2, right? That's what squared means, the thing times itself. If you squared all of that out, multiplied that out, you would get an x squared, you would get a 2x, you would get another 2x, and you would get a plus 4. And you get the plus 4 from the 2 times the 2. These guys group together. So you get x squared plus 4x plus 4. So notice that that part there is that part there. So we've almost made this and this the same thing. It's just that we've got a plus 4 here, which is from here. We want only a plus 3, so that's why we need to take away 1. So we're taking 1 off of there, effectively. So that's just to do the factorising part into the completed square form. Now we want to solve it. To do that, we're going to move the 1 to the other side, just like a normal equation that uh, minus one, sorry, becomes a plus one. To get rid of the square on the bracket, we're gonna square root both sides. Square root of the bracket squared, well, the squared and the square root cancel, and you just end up with x plus two. If you square root one, you get, this is where you've gotta be careful, when you square root any number, you get both the plus and the minus square root. So the square root of one is one, but it's also minus one. So we actually get plus and minus one when we square root that. Okay, I'm just gonna move this one down a little because it's gonna get in the way of our working. So two x squared minus four x minus nine equals zero, just because I will not be able to remember that if I rub it out. Okay, so we've gotten to this point here, which is now 
meaning that we need to consider both of those possibilities. So we'll split it off into two. So in one possibility, we get x plus two equals one, and in the other, we get x plus two equals minus one. Then we've just got two linear equations to solve. So if we move the two over to the other side, it becomes a minus two. So that final solution would be minus one, and this final solution would be minus three. Okay, so that's how we got, um, that's how we solve that one, and we got there by using, completing the square. So, um, yeah, that little bit in there is quite tricky with the square root. So basically what I've said there is that the square root of one is equal to both plus and minus one. That's true for any number. Square root of 16, four, right? Also minus four. Square root of 25, plus and minus five. That's where the second solution for these quadratic equations, which is what you're normally gonna get, two solutions, comes from. Let's have a go at this guy. So we'll start by putting it in completed square form. So x minus three all squared. So we just took half the number of the coefficient of the x and half it to put it in the bracket. So x minus three. Minus three squared is positive nine. Minus three times minus three is a double negative. So that would give you positive nine. We only want positive two. So we need to take off seven to get from nine to two. Just following through in a similar way to what we did over here. So this becomes x minus three squared equals seven. Taking the square root of both sides, we would get x minus three. Um, let me just actually write in the square root this time. So square root in this just gets rid of the squared. Square root in seven, we'll just write that as root seven just now. In fact, we can write it as root seven because this one doesn't actually have a square root. You can't take the square root of seven like you can one. So we need to, in this case, put our plus and our minus in there already. So the square root of seven is plus root seven and the square root of seven is minus root seven. So that's why I'm putting the plus and the minus in there. So splitting these off into two separate equations, we get x minus three equals positive root seven and we get x minus three equals negative root seven. So for these ones, which is quite a common format, you'll often find the number here will not square root you just need to write it as x equals three plus root seven for that one. This one here, I'm gonna write it as x equals three minus root seven. That's quite common format. So in fact, these are probably less usual, less common than these guys here, where you've got a number plus or minus some root. Okay, so turning to the final example, this is a level above because the completing the square part is more difficult. After that, it's fairly similar. So if you're not sure about how to do these for completing the square, um, again, maybe check out the class on that first. It's an algebraic technique to practice in itself. This one is more difficult. What we do here, we start by pulling out a common factor of two from the first two terms. So just a common factor of two. We don't include the x, that's just part of the technique. What we then do is do completing the square on this bit, which would give us an x, um, sorry, that should have been a two in there, of course, a two x. Um, so x minus, and we're still gonna take half of that number, which would be one all squared. If we were to square that out, we would get a one because it's a minus one times a minus one. We don't want that, so we're gonna put a minus one in there, and the minus nine stays on the end this time. Because the minus nine, was not included in the bracket, okay? But again, I'm going quite quickly with this, but you can fill in the details yourself in another class. So just to quickly recap though, I pulled out a common factor of two from the first two terms. I left the minus nine alone. So two times x squared gives you two x squared. Two times minus two gives you minus four. Uh, two times minus two x gives you minus four x. I've then completed the square just on this bit. So x minus one all squared, would give you an x squared, it would give you two minus one x's, giving you the minus two x, but it would also give you a plus one that we don't want, so we have to take away the minus one. The nine, the minus nine stays outside of all of that. Okay, so what we do now is multiply out the bracket. I'm gonna move over here, because I'm getting a little bit low. So two times the round bracket would be two x minus one all squared. Two times minus one is minus two, of course. Minus nine equals zero. So you get two bracket x minus one all squared minus 11 equals zero. And that's gotten us back to kind of like around, around this point here. So moving the 11 to the other side, or the minus 11, it becomes an, a positive 11 on the other side. Dividing by two, 
and we get x minus 1 squared equals 11 over 2. And at this point, we now just need to take the square roots. So x minus 1 is what we get if we square root the left-hand side. If we square root that guy, which is quite a weird-looking number, we're going to get plus or minus the square root of 11 over 2. But it's not unheard of to get numbers like that. So if you get something like that, don't be surprised. Splitting these off into two, we would end up with two solutions, x equals 1 plus root 11 over 2, and x equals 1 minus root 11 over 2. So getting that kind of similar format to what we did up there. These are quite often calculator questions. So you can run through these algebraically, but you might be allowed to then put that on the calculator at the end and get some decimal um, final answer. But the, the key there really is the algebra technique, um, getting to from this point through to that point. This one is definitely a level above these two here. So the key with this topic more than anything is being good with completing the square, getting from there to there, from there to there, and when you're ready for it, getting from there to there, um, or to there, I suppose. And then finishing them off is fairly similar in all three cases. So that's how you go about solving a quadratic equation using the completed square form. So just a quick recap, this is a quadratic equation, that's what they all look like, some variation of that. You can solve them by factorising either as a trinomial, by completing the square, uh, sorry, by common factor or as a difference of squares. But if none of those work, then you either need to use the quadratic formula or the algebraic equivalent of that, which is effectively what we've done here today, which is completing the square. Worth spending a bit of time practicing these. They're good for your algebra, they're good for your understanding of quadratic equations, and they're just quite a common question type.